Kevin, so happy to have you here to talk about the work you're doing with Hurdle. Um, really just start by breaking down this, this platform that you've created and kind of where you're at today in 2022. Yeah, well, first of all, Logan, let me just thank you for um, your never ending support and the entire startup health community, the ecosystem. Uh, I was reflecting on this a few days ago. Um, you know, it's, it's now about three years ago that I first came, became aware of startup health, and it's been quite a journey. And so I just want to pause and thank everyone from the community uh, for the support. And it's an incredible time, not only in our company at Hurdle Health, but for all of us who are working, um, who are leading mission-oriented companies. Yeah. So I guess to answer your question, uh, you know, I'm really excited about this year. I think 2022 for companies like ours who are truly born uh, in the pandemic, on the heels of the murder of George Floyd, that this is a year that we really secure our definitive place in the future of healthcare. Um, and I see, you know, the, sort of the pandemic is sort of coming to maybe some sort of end or maybe another chapter, maybe we should call it that. But I think that our companies will be solidifying their position. So as such, you know, we're very focused on expansion. Um, you know, our company is a teletherapy company, as you know, and what's really important to us is that our services be offered as quick as possible nationwide. You know, a conversation I was just recently having with another founder was connecting the issues of health equity to um, just, just to value and to really reaching patients where they're at and really figuring out what are the really practical means that, that uh, equity and inclusion plays out in healthcare. So I know this is something that's very you know, important to you, culturally competent mental health what are the practical ways that you implement that in Hurdle? Well, you know, I think that's a really good question. You know, as I sort of alluded to, I think what, what has happened the last couple of years, we've seen companies be born in this moment and really attempting um, to respond to um, a call that I think all of us have seen to be more focused on health equity to be more focused on social justice, right? But um, I've spent my entire career working on health equity. Um, I've seen the language evolve from addressing health disparities to health equity. Now I like to use the term mental health parity if we sort of wanted to talk about it in that way. Okay. So I, I think what, what we will see um, is like companies become very, very focused and sort of moving beyond the hype. So what we do at Hurdle is we train our therapists in an evidence-based technique that helps them improve their cultural humility and cultural responsiveness. See, Logan, it's not enough to declare that you're culturally competent and sort of do these things in media yeah. to sort of say to different populations, we want to serve you. In healthcare, and in, in mental health in particular, we have to be painfully honest and recognize that we have a system that was not always designed for everyone. And in order to serve everyone the way that they deserve to be served, I'm sorry, let me get my words, slow down a bit here. We have to think about how we deliver care. Yeah. And that's what we're doing differently at Hurdle. You know, I'm glad that you're kind of unpacking, getting beyond the hype. Uh, how has the market responded and, and uh, investors, how have they responded to your vision for mental health parity? I think incredibly well. Um, one of the things when I reflect on last year, um, our conversations with payers in particular, how very fast those conversations have moved. I'm happy to report we just closed a national agreement with a national payer. We'll close two more national agreements before the end of Q1. Um, and, you know, from what I can gather that this type of speed in terms of companies like ours working with national payers has not always been the case. So I think, you know, payers in particular is where I've sort of had a lot of rich conversations with over the last year have taken really seriously the congressional mandate, I should say, mm -hmm. by the way, to make sure that their members have access to mental health services. And even more so, people seem to be very aware that the current serving uh, service offerings have not served everyone well. Yeah. 
Shift, shifting gears a little bit, your company has grown, you've, you've raised funds, you're, you're growing nationally, and you are trying to instill this idea of cultural humility uh, with your therapists. And I kind of wonder, how do you nurture the culture of your own company? You know, <laughs> I, I appreciate you asking this because, you know, honestly, I've been doing a lot of reflection about this uh, culture in our own company because, Logan, there is a tension. And the tension is, in the startup space, we are expected to move our companies incredibly fast. Um, and there's a lot to do. And of course, there's never enough time. And so, you know, there's always this tension of the work needs more of you, uh, and, but yet you still have to figure out how to take care of yourself. Um, you know, I've tried very hard to make it um, a part of our culture. So for example, we have heads down time. I encourage people to put buffers between all of their meetings. Um, we have a Wellness Wednesdays on the first Wednesday of the month in which we bring in a speaker and teach things like meditation, breathing exercises. Um, at all of our extended team meetings, we have a mindfulness moment. Um, but to be, to be honest with you, it does require a bit of responsibility of the team members as well. Um, and it, it, what we are really compelling the team members to do is to be um, responsible and self-aware enough to figure out what they need to do to take care of themselves because the demands of the environment are never gonna end. Yeah. Is there a patient story that has really stuck with you? Uh, an individual who is really in need of culturally competent, humble uh, care and who received it because of Hurdle? Man, there are so many stories. Logan, I will tell you that I'm a very hands-on founder. I monitor all of the inbound emails. Um, and every other day, I'm touched by someone who's maybe getting therapy for the first time, uh, sort of breaking through in some generational or historical trauma that they've experienced. And I'm always really excited to see that the way that we see the most growth, particularly with our D to C clients, is through family and friends, direct referrals. Okay. So to me, that is always a reminder that we're doing something right. Yeah. Because if I trust the company well enough to recommend to my loved ones yeah. that they should go to the company, I think that says everything. That's awesome. Kevin, thank you for your time explaining what you're working on. Um, I know you are incredibly passionate about this. You know, this is personal to you. And so I really hope this is an exciting year of, of growth for Hurdle. Thank you, Logan. Go ahead. Take care.